The weatherman tells me it's early June, although with the cold wind that's blowing from the north, it doesn't really feel like it. But nevertheless, later on, we'll be going off and filming some surface action. In the meantime, let's give you one or two sort of little tactics and tips of some of the things I do that I think improves my surface fishing. Let's start with bait. Bait is obviously crucial in this situation and over the years for surface fishing, it's changed dramatically. It used to just be basic crust, but then it moved on to cat and dog biscuits, the original munchies, and then the pedigree chums and things like this. These days, I still use some of the straight out of the box uh, dog foods. My favorites by far are these Meaty Meals Small Dog from Baker's. You wouldn't think it was possible to use bread badly. You just buy your loaf, you go fishing, you tear a chunk off and you cast it out. Job done. No. As far as I'm concerned, if you put a little bit more thought into it, you can have a, a much more efficient way of fishing crust. This is how I do it and it's worked for me for, for years. Essentially, what I do is I buy a brick type loaf, not sliced like so, and then I cut it in advance so that it's ready to use. So normally the first thing I do is I cut off the top. So I take off the whole of the top like so, and then I cut that into slices. So I've got all these separate slices for the top. Then for the rest, again, and I've just tied this up to make it so it don't fall straight apart. I then cut straight down the two sides, cut down the ends and across the bottom there as well. Now what that gives me is lots of very even slices of bread that are perfect for actually fishing because when I want to use a piece on the hook, I can just cut a square off, squeeze it, it's then dead easy to place the hook through, bring it back so it sits upright and that's ready to cast. In the water, it always sits that way up and the white of the bread expands out underneath, giving me the perfect bait. These days, that's how I prefer the bread. But possibly the number one bait now is flavored pellets. And let's have a look at them. Over the years, things have moved on with surface bait. So let's have a look at my number one surface bait, which is basically a floating pellet. Um, I use these expander pellets, but if I said to you, for your bottom fishing with a boilie, for the rest of your angling life, all you can use is a plain semolina bait with no color, no flavor, you'd laugh at me. You want variety, you want to tie the fish with different flavors, different baits, different base mixes. And I think it's the same with the surface fishing. So these days, a lot of people, including myself, spend a lot of time thinking about how they can make these more attractive to the carp. And my technique for doing that is dead easy. And I basically call it oiling up. And essentially what I'm gonna do is flavor some oil and then coat these pellets in that flavored oil. So let's have a look at that. Essentially, there's just two ingredients, which is bog standard supermarket sunflower oil, but the key ingredient and possibly my all time favorite surface flavor has to be Nutribates Blue Oyster. I have no idea how many hundreds and hundreds of carp this has caught mus for myself, for Martin and my friends that have all got on this. Um, over the years, I've tried many different flavors, but this one is stand out and how to prepare it and use it is dead simple. Literally, all I'm going to do is take some of that commercial sunflower oil, put it in a pot bottle, and I prefer not to spill it in the back of the car. I've got 300 mils in there. And all I'm going to do is add a quantity of blue oyster. In this case, probably they're looking at that about 30 mils. So for 300 mils of the oil, 
30 mils of the Blue Oyster. Put the top on the bottle, give that a good shake and the two will mix. And there must be some form of emulsifying thing going on in here because it'll cloud up. There we are. And there you have flavoured oil. And that to me has probably been my go-to combination, certainly for five or six years now. The next bit's dead easy. Take a large bucket, put your pellets in it. Take your flavoured oil, drizzle some into the bucket. Don't overdo it. The idea is not to have the pellets swimming in this flavoured oil. The idea is you want to glisten and just have a light coating. So the next bit is where I get my exercise, where I've just got that drizzle of oil in there. Now, when you look at those, they're not swimming in oil or whatever. They've just got a very light glisten on them. And that's all I want because I just want that surface coating. I don't want the, the pellet destroyed and softened. I just want it to have that added flavor. At that point, you can now, I would just go fishing with them now. And the other advantage as well is that if I've any left, I just pop them in the freezer when I get back home and just carry on using them again. But that's fine. You can do other things now with that. If you wanted to, you could add some bag mix into there, some active bag, bag mix and give them a light dusting, which will spread little particles around as well. There's all sorts of things you can do, but I'd happily take that to any lake where I'm surface fishing and expect the fish to like them. So, why don't you pop to your local supermarket, get some sunflower oil, get yourself a bottle of Blue Oyster. You can't go wrong with that. Mix the two together, pop them on your pellets and go catch some carp. Mm -hmm.